you know, antonyms are words that mean the opposite from each other. So like hot and cold or dirty and clean. Okay, so sometimes it's harder for our young learners, first, second grade, um, some third graders have a really hard time comprehending those antonyms. So I like the Easter egg idea. Okay, I take Easter eggs. Now you don't have to match them by color, you can. You can have two totally separate colors. It is however you want to put your eggs together. Um, if you do different colors, sometimes it's a little harder because they automatically assume most of the time that these eggs should go by colors. So you can mix these colors if that is easier or if you think that that would benefit your students or you could start off with the same colors and maybe have a second set of eggs that are different colors. Um, just to change it up a little bit. My eggs are however right now the same color. Um, but anyway, I you take a list of antonyms, you can get off the internet, you can make them up yourself, things that you've talked about in your classroom, and you make your eggs sad and happy. Hot and cold. New and old. Alright, guys, you're gonna break these eggs apart. Pretty simple, break them apart. You're gonna mix them on the table in a basket doesn't matter how you however you want to do it then you're going to pair your students in groups of probably two just so they can work together like I said whenever they're able to talk things through and able to bounce ideas off of each other it only not only benefits you in the classroom it also benefits them okay um, letting them take the lead it builds young minds so putting them with partners is it really does help Okay, so you are going to, like I said, you're going to have a basket or a table full of all of these pieces of an egg, and their task is they have to match the antonyms together. Okay, so super easy, fun. If you wanted to create a worksheet to go along with it that they could write um, once they got so they would connect these two words on the worksheet, that way they could turn it in and you could check over it, um, that's totally preference. But this is just a way to bring in those hands-on manipulatives into your centers with literacy things. So you're, you're working on those antonyms. Now I like to use eggs for lots of activities in small centers with young kids. Um, so I'll be sharing those. I have several different ideas that you can use eggs for in your centers in your classroom. But this one focuses on antonyms. Super quick. Doesn't take that long to put together. And if you pre-plan and you plan ahead Easter, Guys, when the Easter's over, they go on sale for half price, and you can get tons of eggs super cheap. I always stock up because I like to change my words. Sometimes they get broke, stepped on, whatever. I have lots of eggs. My husband thinks I'm crazy sometimes for the things that I bring home, but that's okay because my kids love it, and it's the right, the colorful, great for young kids. Okay, so if there's anything that you can think of that maybe, hmm, how can I implement this? Let me know. Guys, I love to help. I, I love hands-on manipulatives, and I'm not afraid to ask. If I don't know, <laughs> my teacher friends probably think I'm crazy by now because I just go ask. Okay, the only person that is winning is your children, and that is the key whenever we're in a teaching position. We want our children to win. Okay, so antonyms, eggs. Partners, do it at home. Put a bucket, basket. Make it fun. Manipulatives, guys. Eggs.